All right. Hello, everybody. Uh, just listened to the talk before, and actually it's a continuation of uh, of that discussion. But basically, I'm going to be introducing Exat, a little bit of an introduction to myself, and uh, tell you what a docking layer is all about and what our approach is to uh, scaling Bitcoin. So I started mining Bitcoin in 2010. Uh, originally, I was mining Bitcoin with my laptop. At the time, I didn't even really know what I was doing. I started folding protein back, I think, in like 2008 or something like that using computational power. And I just really liked this idea of a bunch of different people that didn't know each other contributing to a particular, uh, a particular asset, basically giving up their time and their, their resources towards something. And that's really what brought me to Bitcoin in the first place. Not really the financial aspect of it. It was the decentralized group of individuals that understood that if you combine resources together, you can probably make something out of it and something that can be better than if you're all separate. And that freedom, that, that, uh, uh, that nature, that, that trustable nature is what really brought me to Bitcoin. And this is what I've been doing for the last, let's say, 15 years, give or take. Uh, I've done a bunch of different projects in between, but uh, the project that I'm going to introduce now essentially is a culmination of six years worth of work leading up to XSAT and a docking layer. Now, the idea right now is that we're seeing in Bitcoin a paradigm shift. Bitcoin historically was seen as an asset that you would transfer between different people and is more for the financial services of it. But in the last couple of years, we're seeing that there's value creation that's starting as well. People want to leverage the Bitcoin network to do NFTs, to do DeFi, to open up new use cases that we've seen in the blockchain space have been here now for many years, but Bitcoin's kind of been left behind. And we're seeing this paradigm shift happen in the last two years or so, but it's been really accelerating in the last year where we've seen a lot of L2s come about. And this really excites me because I'm able to then shift and uh, bridge the gap between what I've been working on over the last couple of years to be able to come and help and scale Bitcoin, really where it all started and really what got me interested in this, this place in the first place. Now, at the same time, every four years post happening, we had the issues on in this ecosystem where we get a calling. The cost to do business increases. Mining power, uh, mining difficulty doubles. But then essentially you need to attract as miners or as uh, mining pools, you need to attract more people. As miners, you need to upgrade your hardware. You need to inf upgrade your infrastructure. And you're always looking at ways to be able to generate extra revenue to be able to offset those financial pressures that are caused by the happening every four years. That's the nature and that's the cycle of Bitcoin. That's what secures the network. That's why it works. That's why there's so much trust. But at the same time, from a financial point of view, it's incredibly difficult. And so there's always an opportunity during these periods where people come in and they're able to offer extra solutions. And that's where we see a lot of innovation. So happenings are incredibly interesting from a financial point of view, because we all know, uh, you know, typically the, 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 because of the finances of Bitcoin, we see value creation increase after and the asset increases in value. But what's more important, I think, and what's really interesting is that we get an upfront. We typically get a lot of new people coming into the space and they're looking at different ways of being able to add value to the network. Now, Exat, why Exat? And why am I here today? What's to talk to you about a docking layer solution? So one of the challenges, as I talked about before, and the per person right before me that gave his speech was talking about how do you scale Bitcoin? There are many different approaches and many people call themselves Bitcoin L2s. One of the issues with Bitcoin L2s that I see right now, though, is that the Bitcoin L2, if it goes down, does not really impact the L1. And that's a significant issue. And it's an engineering issue. And there are multiple solutions out there that are trying to close that gap. But instead of closing that gap in that particular way, we're, we've decided to take a different approach. And we call it a docking layer approach. So we started off with this idea that POW is extremely robust. It's extremely trusted. How can we replicate that trust? What can we do that would be the closest thing to be able to close the gap without necessarily calling ourselves an L2 and without going that route? Because I don't think it's there or there yet. And that would require a lot of upgrades on the Bitcoin network. But for those upgrades to occur, we know that Bitcoin upgrades extremely slowly. 
for a reason. That's the whole point. And so we started up with this idea of UTXO data. If we can mirror the UTXO data onto a decentralized state index, we could leverage that data to power smart contracts. But now you get a new challenge. Who is going to be decentralizing that data? Who do you trust to be able to push data and synchronize data that then is valuable? Because if anybody pushes that data, you again, you remove, you're, you're trusting a third party again. So our approach with Exxon in this decentralized uh, state data index inside of things is to work with the miners directly. So our goal is to achieve 51% or to have over 51% of the current hash power that's producing blocks on the Bitcoin network to be able to synchronize blocks on XSAT. We call them synchronizers. These miners have to have mined a block in the last 72 hours. And with a little bit more energy, they can push that UTXO data onto our network, which then is stored in RAM, which then offers the capacity to be able to index that data, query that data, to be able to actually push information on Bitcoin and have it trigger a smart contract elsewhere. How we do this is through what we call the hybrid uh, consensus mechanism. So that first portion leverages the current Bitcoin miners. It is the closest that we can get to the trust that is currently on the Bitcoin side of things without necessarily having a POW. But because we want to scale it, we introduce a layer in between. And that layer in between is a proof of stake solution. That affords us that scalability and that flexibility that comes with proof of stake. But then the validators on this uh, side of things, on the POS side of things, which is what governs the XSAT network, those also have to have skin in the game. And so to become a validator, you need to stake 100 Bitcoin. And oftentimes what we've been doing over the last six months is we find that the miners also want to become validators because they can get rewarded from the system by pushing data, but then also validating the data afterwards. So it's the same players, it's the same stakeholders that are powering the Bitcoin ecosystem that are now interested in this because it also affords them the possibility of thinking back at those revenue pressures. It also uh, offers them the possibility of gaining an extra token and extra yield that then they can pass along to people within their mining pools, increasing the yield for them and ideally attracting more hash power to their mining pools. We've seen a lot of mining pools having to shut down in the last couple of months because of the happening. And so one of the big things that mining pools are always looking to do is attract more hash power, attract more hash power. Otherwise, that hash power goes to waste if you're never able to mine some blocks. And so with XSAT, they're able to get extra yield for work that they're already currently doing. Now, the other types of validators that we've been partnering with are custodians. We don't want, because I'm a Bitcoiner myself, I don't trust my Bitcoin outside of my gold wallet. I don't trust it with anybody else. But if I do trust it with somebody else, I trust it with some custodians or I'll put it on some exchanges. And so we've been partnering with ch exchanges and custodians and we're going to build a decentralized custodian network whereby your Bitcoin is already in the location that it's already in. So it stays there and a wrapped version is then issued on Exxon. And then you're able to leverage that Bitcoin that's been issued, but your Bitcoin is entirely safe. But all of this is powered because that data, that UTXO data has been stored in RAM. RAM being physical RAM. So it's RWA. It's a real world asset. And it's powered on the Gen 3 layer blockchain that currently already exists. And so we're leveraging that resource um, that's already there, that already has an economy around it. And we're indexing into RAM because it's a tremendous amount of data. And that causes one of the most significant gaps, which is storing this UTXO data being able to query this UTXO data and be able to impact this UTXO data is incredibly expensive. You essentially need an, old, an entire blockchain to be able to offer this if you want to do it in a decentralized fashion. So it's RWA because it's, it's, it's actual RAM, but it's deep in because it's within a network that's decentralized that can be written to, queried to, indexed, and then can actually impact and trigger smart contracts. Now going through this UTXO data over the last couple of months, uh, all 170 million uh, blocks or so, we've discovered a little bit of things because not many people have actually done this. Not many people have actually queried it and downloaded and scanned all of the UTXO data. And some of it that we that we saw when we went through this is that there's some Bitcoin missing. When you actually query all of the UT UTXO data, you should 
it should theoretically come up to a certain amount of Bitcoin, but it doesn't. And so what we found is that going through this exercise and then working with our partners that are currently on our test net, many of them didn't even know this because very few people actually spend the, the resources to be able to go through all the UTXO data, to be able to index it, to be able to query it. And so this exercise has shown that the cost of doing so is incredibly high, and that's part of the basically the 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 um the value that we're providing is that data availability layer that currently is a huge problem for L2s. Most L2s store their data off chain in their own, and so for users, it's not transparent. And they don't have a way to query it. But on XSAT, the idea is that you'll be able to query this data. You'll be able to see it in the block explorer. It'll be decentralized and it's transparent. So it goes back to these ethos of what Bitcoin's all about, that transparency, that privacy, the freedom, the sovereignty over your own assets. A key component of this, like I was talking about earlier, is the decentralized custodian side of things. So in the second phase, so we're currently launching the first phase. We just launched Testnet two days ago. In the second phase, we're going to be decentralizing the custodian side of things. So in the beginning, as I mentioned earlier, your Bitcoin would already be in the custodian that you're already partnered with. So we're already working with multiple custodians. You can think of the Cephu, Copper, Kobo, uh, Cactus Custody, that type of custodian. Many of the partners that we're working with already have their Bitcoin there. Where can the people find out? find out more and where can they go and ask some questions afterwards maybe exat.network you can come see our white paper you can also come see us on our booth booth 625 over there uh come and join us come and ask some questions we've got a bunch of information for you uh otherwise yeah you can message me at big beard Savarai. amazing thank you very much or for you thank you <laughs>